You have a lot of choices when it comes to bed rail installation hardware. And in Woodsmith 235, the Craftsman style bed, we chose to use this flush mounted hook and catch system. It provides a nice clean look and it's a strong joint that's easy to assemble and disassemble, which is beneficial when you're constructing a bed. I have a little confession to make. 10 years ago, I was building a bed for my son and I actually bought this type of hardware and the thought of have, picking up a, a chisel and mortising out eight perfect mortises and the bed legs and bed rails kind of spooked me a little bit, but I think there's a better way than using just a chisel and mallet. And I'm actually going to use a router and template to create the mortises. Making the template's actually pretty easy. It's just made from four pieces of half inch plywood and that creates an opening that perfectly fits the hardware. To do that, I'm going to start with two small pieces of plywood that are cut to the exact width of the hardware and then those are going to get surrounded by two more pieces of half inch plywood and then I'll just glue those together to create that opening. Once we've created the template, next is uh, time to set up the router. I'm going to use a plunge router in this case with a small pattern bit or dado cleanout bit installed that has a bearing on it. And I'll use that bearing to guide the router to create the size and shape of the mortise. And with that done, the next is to set up the depth of cut. Now you'll have to consider uh, when setting it up that you're going to be using uh, double sided tape to uh, stick this to the workpiece. So have that on when you're setting up the depth of cut and I'll set the template in place and then take a piece of the hardware and just look at it until it's perfectly flush and once you got it set up you'll use the stop on the router and with everything set up I think we're ready to start cutting mortises. I'm going to start with the mortises on the legs first. As you can see I've laid out the location of my first mortise here. So all I need to do is remove the backing on the double sided tape and then stick it in place. I'll start up the router and carefully lower it down into the center of the opening. When I've reached full depth, I'll use the bearing to guide the router along the template in a clockwise motion. When I'm done, I'll turn off the router and let it come to a complete stop before removing it from the template. The router took care of the bulk of the mortise, but it did leave rounded corners. So now I need to come back with a chisel and pair those up. In this case, I'm going to leave the template in place as a guide for my chisel. So I can just kind of come in and pair down. Until I get each corner perfectly square. Let's pop off the template and take a look. There, you can see we have a pretty good surface mortise there that the hardware fits into perfectly. Now we are going to have to come back and uh, do some deeper mortises to accept the hooks. As you can see right now, they're not going to fit in there. But I have the router all set up to do the surface mortises, so I'm going to switch over to the rails and do those next. Creating the mortises on the ends of the rails presents some new challenges. First of all, I'm going to be working with a long workpiece, so I have it clamped in the vise here at an angle rather than standing up on a ladder and try to work there. And then second of all, um, working on the end, it's kind of a thin piece, so I'm not really getting enough support for my template and it could wobble off. So to solve that problem, I'm going to add some support blocks just with some double-sided tape here. So I'll just stick those on 
flush with the end of the rail. One on this side and then do the same thing on the other side. Now once those are in place, I can stick my template down. Now I can route my mortise just like before. Once you've started the router, slowly lower the bit, being careful not to contact the spinning bit onto the edge of the template. Then route the mortise. When you're done, turn off the router and let it come to a complete stop before removing it from the template. Okay, I've squared up the corners with the chisel. Now let's pop it off and take a look. Here we go, a pretty good surface mortise again for the hook hardware to fit in. But as you can see, there's some nubs back here on the back where the hooks are attached, so I'm going to have to create some mortises for this to sit flush in the mortise. So I'm going to change the setup on the router and get started on that. To create the shallow mortises to accommodate the nubs on the back of the hook hardware, I've reattached the template, but I've changed the router setup. I've installed a quarter inch straight bit and a 5 8 inch uh, guide bushing, and that'll help me keep the router centered in the template as I route. Next I've uh, changed the uh, depth stop on the, on the router to accommodate the thickness of the template and the hardware. Now that the router is set up, I can route the, the shallow mortises. And the location of the mortise isn't super critical here, as long as you can get the hardware to set flush. But I don't want to route into where my screw holes are located and re weaken the hold of the screws. So what I've done here, I've kind of eyeballed where I need to route and then put some start and stop lines for each of the two mortises. Turn the router on and bring it up to the first start line and lower the bit. Route to the first stop line and raise the bit. Go to the second start line and lower the bit. Route to the second stop line, raise the bit and turn off the router. With the mortises cut on the end of the rail, I'm ready in to install the hook. Here you can see it sits in there nice and flush, and now I just need to screw it in place. The only problem is when you screw into end grain, a lot of times the wood will strip out and it really doesn't have much holding power. So we've come up with a little trick. As you can see on the sample here, we've drilled a half inch hole in the bottom of the rail where we've put a dowel up through. So the dowel, essentially the dowel will go near the end of the rail, and then the screw as you drive it in will go into the dowel and that will give it its holding strength. With that done, I'm ready to pre-drill my holes and install this hardware. Then I can move on to the leg and finish the mortises there. As you can see, I've completed the deeper mortises in the leg. So I'm ready to install the catch plate. So if I put that in place with those deeper recesses, the hooks will easily go and snap into place. As you can see, using a simple template and a plunge router, you can create consistent mortises for this flush mounted hardware and a strong bed connection. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tip, subscribe to the Woodsmith Shop channel. Every week we're adding new tips and great woodworking videos. So hit the bell to be notified. Plus, you'll find project plans and downloads in the description below.